What's up guys, War here, and today I'm gonna bring you my favorite build inside the new PTR with all the changes, and that is the Blood Nova Necromancer build. Let's get into it. Welcome to the video, guys. Today, we're gonna go over the Blood Nova Necromancer build. I've been having an absolute blast with it inside the PTR, guys. You know, truth be told, I wanna let you guys in on a secret. This is my first time ever participating in the Diablo 3 PTRs. I, you know, I switched over from console, if you guys didn't know from following my other videos. But I'm having an absolute blast. And this Blood Nova build I was most excited about coming into Season 27 PTR. So it kind of sucks that the, you know, the Rathma set got nerfed because those skeletons were freaking insane. But anyway, I digress. The Blood Nova build is absolutely insane. It's going to push the higher GRs to about 120 7 130 max i don't know if it's i think you can do 150 but i'm not really sure i haven't tested it that far but i'm having a crazy time this build is insane it's a different kind of build for the necromancer to be playing it's a new play style and i absolutely love the blood nova like i love the, no, the like the death nova skill for the necromancer for a long time and this build is absolutely insane so the way i put it together guys is kind of like a speed build to help get through of uh, you know these grs and try to speed farm some 100 some 110s and just have an absolute blast with it so let's get into the strategy and how you actually use the build it's one of the easiest builds so far that i've tested inside of season 27 ptr it's really easy you're only going to be using three skills okay you're going to be using siphon blood that is your main skill you're going to be using through everything whenever you come up to a pack all you're doing is going to cast siphon blood and it's going to automatically cast for death nova blood nova which is great. You have to have Blood Nova on the skill bar for your Simulacrum. So when you start a GR, you're going to pop Simulacrum so you get your two. And they're going to cast Blood Nova as you cast it, which is for some, some insane damage. And then the only other two spells you're going to cast, guys, is Bone Armor Desolation when you get up to groups for, you know, to stun them and for some a lot of survivability so that way you don't die. And then we got Blood Rush Potency so that way you can just kind of bounce around to each mob because this build is very particular on density of mobs the more monsters that you can group up and then hit with your blood novas the more damage that you're going to do so again this build is very very easy to use it's actually a lot of fun the way i've kind of built it when we get into the gear guys is kind of a speed farming build which i really like but this build is so easy and so op right now inside the ptr i think it's going to be one of the better uh, necromancer builds coming out of the season 27 especially with the rathma nerf maybe they change it before the ptr is done and we get into season 27 who knows but right now the blood nova necromancer build is just so much fun it's really chill super easy again guys you're using three skills you're using siphon blood blood rush and then bone armor you don't have to use anything else you basically just left click all the way to the you know rift guardian super super easy and a lot of fun guys this build might be one of the most powerful builds going into season 27 for the necromancer so let's get into the gear and exactly what you need for the build all right the gear that you're going to need for the build is really easy guys you're going to need the tragul set you can use all six if you want but i'm only using five pieces because i'm running the stuart greaves but you want the five piece tragul set with the ring of royal grandor because your six set bonuses all your life spending abilities which is going to be your siphon blood as well as your uh death nova that all uses life it's going to deal additional damage and in in turn where you're using your simulacrums they're going to be triggering blood novas so the more self-infliction that you do the more damage that you're going to do so we got the six piece tragul set we're going to go on to the stuart greaves guys this is the, probably my favorite part of this build Whenever I run Necumancer, I always feel like the speed builds are just too slow, and Stuart Greaves helps. For Dante's Binding, Dante's Binding, you gain additional damage when an, uh, an enemy is inflicted by your curse with Aura of Frailty. That's always going to happen as you get close to mobs. Somebody's going to be afflicted, so you get the damage reduction. And then onto our rings and our amulets, guys. You want Haunted Visions. That's for you Simulacrum, so that way they stay alive the entire time. And then we're going with convention of uh, convention of elements for the increased elemental damage, and of course, Crispin Sentence, one of the best items for the Necromancer. So you get the increased damage against slowed or triple enemies that have slow and a curse effect, which is great. Onto our weapons, guys. These things got a rework for this season, which is fantastic. The main one is going to be the Iron Rose, attacking with Siphon Blood has a hundred percent chance to cast a free Blood Nova. This is a must for this build. You have to have this. So every time you cast Blood Nova, you and your Singing Malacrums all cast Blood Nova. It's great. Increased damage on that as well. 
Then the funerary pick got her change, guys. We're going with Siphon Blood Drains from two additional enemies with increased damage. And then it has Power Shift on there for 20% uh, per stack and benefits from all skills, which is fantastic. Now, here's the, the change in Season 27. As you guys know, there is the angelic crucible so we applied this you only can use it on one item so we went the funerary pick and we're getting the death nova ability so if you hit with five times on a death nova it adds a spirit effect that in afflicts an enemy on the fifth cast up to three spirits can be hit at a time so if you if you hit with 15 death novas you get three spirits i haven't really seen this do a lot of damage or could really tell but i'm sure in the ptr once we get out of it we'll see that ability be a little bit more used so we'll see how that goes and then on to our bracers guys here is where you can change a lot of things i'm using the uh arm guards that way you, when you destroy wreckable objects you get a speed increase which is fantastic but you could do the all dual set inside with the bracers and the um, shoulders so that way you get the increased damage against elites and reduced damage against elites but it's totally up to you it does slow down the build because then we don't have six and we'd have to take the steward greaves out getting into the cube the blood tie blade is the main thing that we need in here guys death nova deals increased damage to every enemy so that goes again with our density the more monsters we have the more damage that we do uh the aquilas 90 percent above resource you take all damage you should always be almost at 100 percent resource unless you're manually casting blood nova because siphon doesn't drain anything we generate so this will always be active always that's why in the additional if we put this in here and then use the our dual set we get a lot of damage increase but we you know we lose this so i'm going with this right now in speed and so far it's tested out to be really good and then of course ring of royal grandeur to help with the six piece bonus on to our skills we briefly went over those guys but we're going to go again we got Siphon Blood, the main thing here with uh, Power Shift, and then uh, Death Nova, which you never have to cast. You don't even have to pick a rune for it, but we want Blood Nova, of course. And then Blood Rush Potency for the increased armor every time we're dashing around, which is insane. Aura of Frailty to afflict curses. This do is done automatically with the Aura of Frailty, which is great. Bone Armor Desolation gives us in increased survivability and then stun enemies every time we hit this. And then, of course, Simulacrum. Uh, blood and bone so we get two simulacrums and then they all pop blood nova when we do those are the skills guys onto our passives we got swift harvesting we got increased tax speed for uh blood or siphon blood standalone it is an increased armor by 100 but we have two simulacrums so it's only 80 percent. still really really good final service just in case for you know if you're a hardcore player or you just don't want to die this is great and then of course spreading maldiction you receive 1% damage bonus for each enemy afflicted by a curse, which will always happen. All right, guys. So here's the thing with the skills you could, or the passives. You could probably swap out final service for draw life. Increase your life regeneration by 10% for each enemy within 20 yards. So then that way, while you're casting Blood Nova and Siphon Blood, it keeps your health alive as much as possible. So far in my testing, I haven't had a problem with that. But it's okay it could work but right now just having the final service is just great if there's any other passes that you guys think that would help out for the build please let me know down in the comments because i haven't really found anything that is good outside of these passives here but let me know we're still testing and then of course guys on to our follower this is kind of the standard setup here we forgot to put our gems in here as you guys can see but this is the kind of standard setup guys in almost every follower build you want nemesis bracers stacked with flavor of time to spawn champions and make those pylons last gloves of worship make them last even longer which is great and then of course we want almost 25k main stat i haven't really like messed with these too much but you want 25k main stat because then you get the most bonus you get the full 10 percent bonus on your cooldown and then you get the full maximum damage increase from your follower which is great all right, guys, that's going to do it for the Blood Nova build inside of the PTR for Season 27. I'm absolutely loving this build, and I already told myself that, like, the Necromancer and the Wizard are going to be the two classes that I'm probably most likely going to play going into the next season, which is great. Again, this build is super, super fun. We're still testing a lot of things, guys, but I wanted to pump this video out to you. We're going to do a, no, uh, a PTR video on the Wizard because those magic missiles look insane. But so far, this is the build I've been enjoying the most. And again, guys, you can see, like, I'm already crushing, like, almost 100 Paragon levels really, really fast. 
or excuse me, uh, GR levels 100 really, really quick. I think we're just doing it in the 80s right now, but we're crushing it in like two minutes with very, very low Paragon and very, very low gear. I don't even have any augments. My stuff isn't even ancient, and this build is absolutely decimating everybody. So this build is insane, guys. Make sure to test it out and look forward to playing the Necromancer. I've been waiting for them to get a buff for a while now, and necro is just a really cool build but they just, you know blizzard just keeps shitting on it but hopefully season 27 this will be really great so if you guys have enjoyed this video looking forward to the new season please drop a like guys and comment down let me know if you guys like the blood and over build or what do you think is going to happen with the necromancer for season 27 and if you're new here please subscribe guys it really does help out the channel and as always stay gaming and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace